welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and I'm excited to bring you another episode absolutely free. This episode is one of many released every month, totaling over 80 episodes so far. Each one is meticulously digitally restored and stored in the cloud for your convenience, a process that incurs costs. To help cover these expenses, you might hear some advertisements throughout the episode. While we do retain the original commercials for historical authenticity, you may also encounter modern ads, which help keep the lights on. If you prefer an ad-free experience, we offer a couple options. You can listen to the episodes on YouTube. You can also support us by becoming a patron on our Patreon page. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash donate. Again, otrwesterns.com slash donate. I do want to emphasize that we are committed to providing this content to you for free, but also we have to be transparent about the financial realities to bringing this to you. Now, let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be the Lone Ranger original air date is February 13th, 1948, and the title is Mysterious Stranger. Hope you enjoy. Can you imagine that? He's turned 10 perfect handsprings in a row. He's terrific. <laughs> He's feeling his Cheerios. Yes, Cheerios, the breakfast cereal made from oats. Good old-fashioned nourishing oats, all ready to eat. And now, the Lone Ranger, brought to you by Cheerios. Cheerios, 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 Cheerios. I'll sell it. A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. Yes, when you hear that galloping horse, it's... The Lone Ranger. And when you see that delicious breakfast cereal shaped like tiny, crisp little letter O's... It's Cheerios. Yes, sir, and when you see someone who's just brimming with energy, you can bet your boots he's had his Cheerios. Because there's nothing quite like a bowl of Cheerios to set you up for a day full of action and fun. It's nourishing, really nourishing. We recommend Cheerios for every loyal follower of the Lone Ranger because it gives you a kind of nourishment that really counts. Remember, for a better breakfast, start with Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto... The daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Let's go, Rico! Are you Silver? The young man who sat inside the stagecoach was quiet and unfriendly. Though Dan Reed, young nephew of the Lone Ranger, had ridden many miles in the same coach, no words had been spoken. Finally, as they neared Frontier Town, Dan decided to break the ice and start a conversation. We'll uh, be in Frontier Town soon, sir. I know. Is uh, this your first visit there? Yes. My name's Dan Reed, sir. I live near Frontier Town with friends. Really? Here, Do you know anyone in town, sir? No. No one. Oh. Uh, there's Rimrock Bridge just ahead. After we cross that stream and then the railroad tracks, we'll enter Frontier Town. Uh, does the stage stop near the hotel? Oh, yes, sir. It stops at the Sunset Hotel. Thanks. But if anyone comes to stay a long time, they take a room at Mother Willard's rooming house. Well, that would suit me better. Oh, I can show you where it is if you want me to, sir. Yeah, yeah, we're going across Rimrock Bridge now. You better get my things together. That small bag on the seat there is mine. I'll hand it to you. Oh, oh gee, I'm sorry. I dropped it. Why do you have to be so clumsy? Oh, I'll pick up the things and put them back Here, in. Here, son, let them alone. Golly, I, I was just trying to... Oh, well, those are a doctor's instruments, aren't they? None of your business. Why do you have to be so snoopy? Golly, mister, I didn't mean Quiet. to... Oh, it's all right, Dan. Forget it. My 
My nerves are rather jumpy today. Well, that's too bad. I'm sorry. Eat it there. Come on. You'll like this, Tom. Doc Drummond could use some help. He's the only doctor in town. See here, Dan. Don't let these instruments fool you. I'm a, a salesman, not a doctor at all. Oh. I... Well, as a matter of fact, I was stopping off here to see Dr. Drummond because of an order he sent in about new instruments. Oh, I see. My name's uh, Garwood Ellis. Well, glad to know you, Mr. Ellis. Yeah. We're almost to the hotel. I'll help you carry your luggage and show you the way to Mother Willard's rooming house. That's the rooming house just ahead. Last house on this side street. That'll do very nicely. Glad it's in a quiet section of the town. In here, sir. Ah, nice out here. It's way out at the end of town. Mm -hmm. Uh, What are those hills out there? Those are the Enchanted Hills. Good afternoon. What can I... Oh, say you're that boy Dan Reed, aren't you? That's right, Mother Willard. I brought Mr. Ellis here. He wants a room. Glad to meet you, Miss Ellis. Thank you, Mrs. Willard. If you happen to have a room, Now, I... you just call me Mother Willard, like all the rest do, Miss Ellis. Figure on staying long? I don't really know how long I'll stay yet. Just come in on the stagecoach from the east? Yes, I did. Now, if you'd be kind Where'd enough you come to... from? Well, uh... now, look, ma'am. If you don't have a room for me, perhaps I'd better go back to the hotel oh, and... Oh, fi- now, don't be so touchy. <laughs> Land sakes, nobody takes offense at my questions around here. Just my way of being friendly, stranger. Dan can tell you that. <laughs> well, that's right. Um, but Mr. Ellis is tired after the trip, Mother Willard, so if you'll oh, show him... Of course he is. I should have thought of that. Come right on in. I'll give you a nice, comfortable room. All to yourself. Good. Thanks, Dan, for helping me. I can manage the luggage now. All right, sir. Maybe we'll meet again soon. Of course you will, Dan. You come around any time you feel like it to see us. Thanks, ma'am. I'll be leaving now. Bye. Goodbye. Bye, Dan. Well, I declare that's about one of the nicest boys around here. I don't know anything about his folks, but I certainly like Dan. Yes, I like him, too. He's very friendly. Now, if we can go inside... Oh, Dan, thanks. Of course we can. Come right on in, Mr. Ellis. I'll show you to your room. Dan Reed went to the livery stable to get his horse, Victor. It was almost dusk when he arrived at the camp he shared with Tonto and the Lone Ranger in the Enchanted Hills, several miles northeast of Frontier Town. Ho, ho, Victor, ho, boy, ho, ho. Well, Dan, welcome home. We missed you. Well, thank you, sir. I sure missed you and Tonto. How, Dan? Hi. (laughs) You have good time with Thunder Martin, (laughs) Clarabelle? I sure did, Tonto. Those two keep me laughing all the time. (laughs) Uh, Me like them. Them plenty good company. <laughs> yes, and they're mighty good friends to all of us. And to each other in spite of their differences. Uh, stage must have come in late, Dan. You take long time to get here. Oh, the stage was on time, but I showed a man uh, on the way to Mother Willard's rooming house before I left Frontier Town. Someone from the stage, Dan? Yes, sir. He's stopping off here to see Doc Drummond. His name is Garwood Ellis, and he's a salesman. Salesman? Yes. He had a little bag that fell open. It had doctor's instruments in it. <laughs> I thought he was a doctor at first, and, well, he, he seemed to make him angry. Then he told me he was selling the instruments. Mm. Strange you should be upset about that. Also strange about him stopping off here to see Doc Drummond to try to sell him medical instruments. Why, sir? Because, Dan, Doc Drummond has a kit of fine instruments, for one thing. The other is that there aren't enough doctors in the whole Western Territory to make such a trip out here worthwhile for any salesman. Oh, that right, Dan. Golly... Well, then I wonder why he told me that. I wonder the same thing, Dan. You've aroused my curiosity. I'd like to make it a point to know more about Garwood Ellis. A few days later, Dan and Tonto were in the general store buying a few supplies. Well, here's uh, anything else? No. No, that all for now. All right, you, here's a package. Here comes Mother Willard, Tonto. That's Mother Willard, all right. Well, for Dan's sake, Dan Reed. Morning, Mother Willard. Oh, this is Tonto. Oh, how do you 
How are you, son? Thought you were coming round to see that friend of yours, Miss Ellis. Well, I haven't been into town since Mr. Ellis arrived. How is he? To tell you the truth, I'm worried about that young man, Dan. Mopes and paces in his room all the time. Hasn't been outside since the day he come there to my rooming house. He hasn't? We said he was going to call on Doc Drummond. Matter of fact, Doc Drummond come to the house yesterday to see one of the rumors. Oh, he did? Well, maybe young fella see Doc Drummond then, Dan. Oh, but no, he didn't at all. You see, being worried about him like I am, I went up and knocked on his room door. He opened the door a crack and asked what I wanted. Gee. Yep. And then when I told him maybe he'd better let Doc Drummond talk to him, he says, please, Mrs. Willard, he won't call me Mother Willard like the rest, please, he says, I know you mean well, but I'd rather you let me handle my own affairs. I don't want to see anyone, understand? And then he closed the door right in my face. Golly, I, I wonder why he's like that. I've been trying to find out what's wrong with him, but I can't make much headway. You see, he won't let me in to clean his room. Says he do it himself. He even takes his meals in his own room. But I can't understand why he wouldn't talk to Doc Drummond. Uh, we ready to go now, then. Oh, yes. Well, goodbye, Mother Willard. Give my regards to Mr. Ellis when you see him. Yes, I'll do that, Dan. Goodbye. Adios. Bye. And now I... Adios. Adios. Oh, yes. Dan, you put supplies in saddlebags while we go to Sheriff Taylor's office. Maybe him have some new hand deals for Lone Ranger. All right, Tano. I'll meet you at the hitch rack. As Dan waited at the hitch rack, he saw a horseman galloping into town. The man drew rein when he saw Dan. Whoa! Whoa there! Whoa! Hey, boy! Hey, kid! Where will I find Dr. Drummond? Up the street, opposite the sheriff's office. What's happened, mister? Some sort of epidemic broke out over at Rock Hill. It's getting bad, and we don't have a doctor there. Hello, hope Dr. Drummond's in his office. He did back. Go on. Golly. Oh, be ready to go now, Dan. Uh, what man on horse say about Dr. Drummond? Well, there's an epidemic over at Rock Hill. He's come here for Dr. Drummond. Oh, that's not good. Come, we go tell Lone Ranger. Hey, boy. Hey. Um, come on, Victor. And I'm up to town. Time later, Dan and Tonto arrived at the camp where the Lone Ranger was waiting. Oh, oh, go, Victor. Hold on. Hold on. You both seem to be in a hurry. Something wrong in town? A man came to Frontier Town looking for Doc Drummond. There's an epidemic in Rock Hill. That's right, Kimasabi. Mm. Did he say what kind of an epidemic it is, Dan? No, sir. And me see him talk to Dan. Him look like him plenty excited. Yes, he was. Oh, oh me forget. Uh, oh. Me stop at Sheriff's office. Bring two new handbills, Kimasabi. Let me see them, Tonto. Oh, uh, here. Mm. Oh, this one's about an outlaw who robbed a bank in Pecos. Tall, heavy set, wears a black mustache, car on cheek. I'll have to keep an eye out for him. And what other ones say? Me not have chance to look. Two new handbills, Kimasabi. Let me see them, Toto. Ah, oh, here. Hmm. Oh, this one's about an outlaw who robbed a bank in Pecos. Tall, heavy set, wears a black mustache, car on cheek. I'll have to keep an eye out for him. And what other ones say? Me not have chance to look. Well, let's see. Wanted for murder. Dr. Gary Edwards, 30 years of age, about 5 feet 10, blonde hair. Known to be left-handed. Contact Sheriff Green in Austin with any information or whereabouts. Dan. Yes, sir? Your friend on the stage. I wonder if... Oh, he has black hair, sir. He's not a doctor either. That what him tell you, Dan. Remember what Mother Willard say about him? You tell Lone Ranger. Uh, what did she say, Dan? Well, she said Doc Drummond was at the house and, and she wanted Mr. Ellis to see him, but he refused. I see. But didn't he tell you he was coming to Frontier Town to see Doc Drummond, Dan? Well, that's right, sir. He did say that. Mother Willard says he hasn't left his room since he arrived in town. Hasn't left his room, you say? Not right. Me hear Mother Willard say him have meals and room, not let her in to clean up. He's really awfully nice, sir. I liked him a lot. Maybe he's sick or something. Dan, he may be a nice chap, as you say, but his actions are far from normal. In fact, they're downright suspicious. Well, that's right. I can't help but think of him in connection with this handbill on that young doctor in Austin. Oh, golly, I'm sure Mr. Ellis wouldn't kill anyone, sir. Anyway, he's not a blind... Hair is easy to change, Dan. He could have died at black. That's right, Dan. Oh, golly. Good night, Toto. 
I'm going to Mother Willard's place and pay a visit to Mr. Ellis. Before I leave, I'll know for certain if he's a man wanted for murder in Austin. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Zoe! It's a new win to our conference record for the high jump. He went over the bar at six feet four. He's feeling his Cheerios. Yes, Cheerios, the breakfast cereal that's made from oats. Good old-fashioned nourishing oats all ready to eat. Rangers, who's the best athlete in your neighborhood? Who's the fellow who has the most strength and speed and endurance? Well, sir, I don't know his name, but I'll bet you dollars to donuts I can tell you one of the big secrets of his success. Because whenever you see an outstanding athlete, you can be pretty sure he's the kind of fellow who eats a really good breakfast every morning. How about your breakfast? Would you like to know an easy way to make it better? Here it is. Just be sure to start your breakfast with a nutritious cereal. A cereal like Cheerios. For Cheerios gives you a kind of nourishment that really counts. You see, Cheerios is made from the cereal grain favored by nature. Cheerios is made from oats. One of the very best of all the cereal grains for growth and energy. Cheerios, crisp, golden brown, and all ready to eat right from the package, actually provides whole grain amounts of all the known important vitamins and minerals of oats. That's why Cheerios is so energizing. That's why it helps so much to build up strength and endurance. Have a bowl of Cheerios for breakfast tomorrow morning. Delicious Cheerios topped with fruit and plenty of good fresh milk or cream. It's terrific. Yes, try Cheerios and see for yourself why so many people are saying, He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue our story. After having supper in camp with Dan and Tonto, the Lone Ranger mounted his great stallion silver and rode into Frontier Town. Meantime, the man Dan knew as Garwood Ellis sat on the edge of his bed in his room, which was located on the ground floor at the back of Mother Willard's rooming house. Suddenly, he looked up, startled, as he heard a thud at the back window. What the... Don't shoot. You're covered. Huh. Masked man. I didn't hear you climb in that window. I made certain of that. What do you want? Now that you've got the drop on me... I, I... came here to talk to you. I want straight answers. There's nothing to talk about, especially with you. Why are you wearing that mask? Why do you... Forget come... the mask. What I want you to do is... All right, go to the door. I'll be right behind it with this gun pointed at you. But be careful what you say. Well, Mrs. Willard, what is it? I came to tell you that I'm going over to Rock Hill. There's an epidemic of diphtheria there, and Doc Drummond sent for help. An epidemic of diphtheria? But you'll be in danger. Oh, you'll get... when a... folks is in trouble, I don't think of the danger. I'll be all right. But I came to tell you, you'll have to go out for your meals, Miss Ellis, if you don't mind, till I get back. Yes, yes, of course. Don't worry about that. Oh, well, land sakes, it's right nice of you to feel that way about it. Well, I'll have to hurry along now. Good night, Mr. Ellis. Good night. I heard what Mother Willard said. She's a very brave woman to go there. That's right, she is. She said Doc Drummond sent for help. Must be a bad epidemic. He's the only doctor available. So I heard. But to get back to your visit here... I have changed my mind about what I was going to say, Mr. Ellis. You can wait. I, uh, am going to ride to Rock Hill. I'll be leaving from the west end of town near Rimrock Bridge in 20 minutes. I can have another horse ready if you think you'd care to go and help. No. Why should I? There's nothing I could do, nothing. I'm sure it isn't fear of the illness that holds you back. I don't know what you mean. Maybe you can figure out what I mean in the next 20 minutes. I'll leave now and wait at Rimrock Bridge. Adios. Think it over. I won't go. I won't. No matter what he says, they'll have to handle that epidemic the best they can without me. The Lone Ranger and Tonto waited near Rimrock Bridge. Tonto had got another horse at the livery stable. The two men sat in silence on Silver and Scout for some time. Then Tonto spoke. Looks like him not come, Kimasabi. The time is almost up. 
Maybe you're right, Tonto. I may have misjudged him. You really think him... He's got footsteps now. I don't hear anything. Perhaps you're... Yes, it must be Ellis, Tonto. Oh, that's good. Well, you win, mister. Here I am. Glad to see you brought that medical kit with you, Dr. Edwards. What? How did you know? Never mind that now. Not up. There's no time to lose. Easy you realize I'm practically riding to the gallows for a crime I didn't commit? I'm accused of murder, but I'm I not... admire your great courage. But let's go. One Come on, Get out there. In the cafe in Rock Hill, many of the townsmen talked about the misfortune that had struck their little town. Well, I guess we'll be all right. Doc Drummond from Frontier Town's here and a woman named Mrs. Willie. They're having all the sick folk move to the town hall. Let's hope they can keep it from getting any worse. If it gets too bad for one doctor to handle... He ought to be able to get it under control. No use us getting panicky about it. Well, I've heard that disease spreads like wildfire. Yeah, it's been known to wipe out a town. Well, now there's no use looking on the bad side of things. Let's leave things in the doc's hands and hope for the best. Hope isn't going to help any. We ought to try to find another doctor and get him here. There's a Dr. Meeks in a little town about a hundred miles from here. We ought to send him a telegram. In fact, I'll send him a telegram right now. Then we won't have to worry. In the town hall in Rock Hill, Doc Drummond worked unceasingly over the many sufferers who had been brought into the place. At his side was Mother Willard. Both were exhausted with their continued efforts to stem the epidemic, which seemed to be growing worse. There. Oh, Mother Willard, I'm... I'm fighting to stay on my feet. Been at this for 24 hours. I know, Dr. Lummer. If we only had help, another doctor. But there's none to be had. My serum's running low, too. When that's gone, it'll be pretty bad. Pretty bad. I get me to a cot. Quick! Oh, heaven help us! You've got it yourself. Oh, here, let me help you to that cot over there. Can't let it get me. Got to keep going now. <coughs> oh, don't, oh, don't. Whatever are we going to do now? <laughs> Meanwhile, back in the cafe, a subdued group of men stood around talking. It's getting worse, that's what. We've had several deaths already. Yeah, Doc Drummond can't handle it alone. If we can't find another doctor, we can get to come here. We ought to take our families away from here. Can't do that. Sheriff's orders. Sheriff Taylor from Frontier Town come over to take charge since our sheriff's away. Taylor says nobody's leaving. Here comes the sheriff now. Huh? Howdy, boys. Things getting any better, Sheriff? We can't stay here and die like rats, Sheriff. Sorry, but I can't allow anyone to leave town. We'd just be taking the epidemic somewhere else. Maybe Doc Drummond will be able to... Sheriff! Doc Drummond's been cooked down with a fever. Holy smoke, we'll all get it now. What are we going to do? Sheriff, I'm scared. I'll hold on, all of you. It looks mighty bad, but we'll have to do the best we can till we find another doctor. There isn't another doctor within a hundred miles. That's right, Sheriff, and he can't leave. We got a telegram saying so. He's sending serum, but he can't come. Hey, look. I saw through the open door. Yeah. A masked man just reined up outside. What? Now, oh, stay right here, all of you. I know that masked man. I'll go out and talk to him. Sheriff uh, Taylor, I was looking for you. Sure glad to see you, my friend. But things are mighty bad here, let me tell you. Doc Drummond's been took down with a fever, too. Doc Drummond? That is bad. Sheriff, I brought another doctor. Now, this man here. Another doctor? But there isn't any to be had. Only Doc Meeks. He's a hundred miles away. Nevertheless, I'm a doctor, Sheriff. I came to help. Here's my kit. Then you're the best news we've had today. Better get over to the town hall right away, Doc. Hurry. All right, Sheriff. Come on, Silver. Get, get up there. Town. Arriving at the town hall, the Lone Ranger and Tonto went inside with the young doctor. They approached Mother Willard. Mother Willard, I brought another doctor. Oh, thank heaven. A masked man and Mr. Ellis. The masked man is a friend to all of us. As for me, I'm Dr. Gary Edwards, Mother Willard. I'm ready to go to work. Dr. Gary Edwards? Well, I No time for explanations now. They can come later. Yes, they can come later. Now we have serious work to do.
the afternoon wore on to nightfall, and the darkness finally melted into dawn. Still young Dr. Edwards, with the Lone Ranger and Mother Willard at his side, constantly worked without a letter. Other days and nights came and went. The young doctor knew his business thoroughly and brought hope and confidence to the whole town. It was almost noon. A week had passed, and he and the Lone Ranger stood with Mother Willard outside the town hall door. Well, I think we've got this licked. There haven't been any more deaths nor new cases since yesterday. You certainly know your business, Doctor. He's wonderful. Doc Drummond is feeling much better, too. He says he never saw the likes of you before, Doctor. Here comes Sheriff Taylor now. Morning. Everybody's talking about what the new doc's done here. That's right. It's sure like a miracle the way you stepped in and practically stopped this epidemic. Fortunately, I made a special study of this disease. Also, I had a quantity of serum with me. It was most fortunate you came to Frontier Town. Look, we come over after having a meeting in the cafe. We voted to ask you, Doc, to stay here in Rock Hill for keeps. We'll give you a house to live in. It'd be a wonderful thing for this town if the doctor will accept. But I... Look, why haven't you told the sheriff what you know about me? I did, Dr. Edwards. You, you did? <laughs> why, sure he did. Right after you come here. And he sent a telegram last night to Austin... Then that's your answer. I'll be going back to Austin as soon as they send for me. Maybe the sheriff has more to say about it, Gary. Yes, I sure have. We got a telegram back saying that you're not wanted there at all. Well, but... uh, listen, Gary. I put two and two together. Realized you were the Dr. Edwards listed on that handbill Sheriff Taylor received. The medical kit, your strange actions at the rooming house, and the way you pulled your gun on me with your left hand. All that indicated I was right about your identity. I knew it was easy to dye blonde hair. Now, see here. What's this all about? Nobody can say anything about <laughs> Doc Edwards and get away Easy, with... easy, Mother Willard. We found out he was accused of shooting a man in Austin. But the telegram says the real killer has been found. Dr. Gary Edwards is innocent. Yes, I tried to tell them I was innocent, but they didn't believe me then. What really happened, Gary? I was in the cafe one afternoon over in Austin. Yes? A man came in and argued with me about an operation which had left his son crippled. He threatened my life if I didn't leave town. That night, he was killed from ambush on his way home. I see. I was blamed and had no alibi, so I left and came to Frontier Town. An outlaw who was recently captured admitted killing that man, Gary. So his confession cleared your name. Gosh, I... I don't know what to say. Oh, you don't have to say anything, Doctor. Your actions speak louder than words. Yes, Dr. Edwards could have refused to come here to Rock Hill... But he decided to come to take the consequences. I admire his courage. Well, what do you say, Doc? Are you staying here for good in Rock Hill? Yes. Yes, I'll be glad to stay. Gosh, I got to go tell the men. You won't regret it, Doc. Now that you've found yourself again, Gary, I'll leave you with your friends. And I'll be back if you need me. Adios. Oh, land's sake. Now I lose you from my room and house. But I'll come to see you often, Mother Willard. And I hope to see Dan again, that boy I met on the stage. I think somehow he's connected with that masked man and helped bring this about. By meeting him, I mean. But who is that masked man? He was almost as good as a doctor inside there. Uh, Yeah, who is he, Sheriff? You said you knew. (laughs) Of course I know. The man who got Doc Edwards to come here and did so much for us all is the Lone Ranger. Rangers, take this urgent message to Mother. Don't fail to let Mother know. Apple Pie Quick is now selling at a special low sale price. Yes, there's a big sale now at leading grocers. A special low price on Apple Pie Quick. Prices have been slashed. Never before could you try Apple Pie Quick at such low cost. With Apple Pie Quick, the family can have an apple pie almost any old time. Apple Pie Quick gives you pie crust mix and apple slices, too. And the pie's in the oven in a matter of minutes. A flaky crusted... Fresh and juicy centered dream of an apple pie. So now, tomorrow, take advantage of the sensational price cut sale on Apple Pie Quick. Look for slashed prices on Apple Pie Quick now during this special sale. You have just heard another of the famous Lone Ranger stories, a copyrighted feature originating in Detroit and brought to you by General Mills, makers of that nourishing breakfast cereal made from oats and ready-to-eat Cheerios. 
Your announcer, Harry Golder. The Lone Ranger is broadcast every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day and thanks for listening.